is it going everybody? Welcome back to another Pi game and Python tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at text and, and fonts and getting text and a bit more kind of written words and strings that we would normally have in Python into our Pi game game and, uh, and program here. So before we get down to that I'm just going to kind of tighten this up a little bit because that's very expensive and it looks weird. Uh, okay, that's a little better. Honestly, this uh, <laughs> this whole class block we're not going to be using. We're going to get into the um, font object in Pygame, and that can actually be. We're going to want to create that. Let's see, I'm trying to. I'm looking at my notes over here on the side. Maybe we can put this right above the uh, right above the running equals true section right here. Okay. All right. So we want to create a font because in Pygame that font will allow us to render text and things onto the screen. It creates a surface and we can blit that onto the window and the screen that we actually already have created and running for us. So we want an object to be able to keep track of all that. I'm just going to call mine font. You can obviously call yours whatever you want. And that's going to equal something from the Pygame module from the font submodule. And we're going to take a look at that in the documentation. And let's let's do that right now. I'll head over to um, my web browser and in the documentation at pygame.org, check out font. All right, so font is a Pygame module for loading and rendering fonts. Font init, uh, that initializes it. Pygame init at the beginning of our code does that for us, that sort of thing. Um, it'll be able to get fonts, find fonts, create fonts. There's a font object, and that's what we're going to be looking at the most. Creates a new font object from a file. Sysfont and font are the ones we're going to be looking at uh, specifically in this tutorial, but these others, get font and uh, match font, you might want to take a look at. All right, before we read the description, actually, let's just go ahead and read the description. Font module allows for rendering true type fonts into a surface object. It accepts any blah blah blah. <laughs> the module is optional and requires SDL underscore TTF for true type fonts as a dependency. Um, that may have been installed alongside Pygame when you installed it. Um, we should test to see if pygame.font is available and initialized before attempting to use a module. I'm certain that mine is installed, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Um, if you want to test it, you could just do this with me, or you could verify however way you want. Most of the work done with fonts are done by using the actual font object. We're going to get into that very, very soon. The module by itself has only routines to initialize the module and create font objects with the pygame.font.font. Okay. <laughs> you can load fonts from the system by using the pygamefont.sysfont. You might have actually seen me trying to type that at the very beginning, before we got into the documentation. There are a few other functions that can help look up the system fonts and try to find what it is that the computer that you're running on actually has. Pygame does come with a built-in default font, and we're going to be taking a look at that after we um, play with sysfont. This can always be accessed by passing none as the first font name, or in this case, the first argument when we run sysfont. Um, it uses a bit more documentation here. Initialize, quit, blah, 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 blah. Let's get down to sysfont. This function will create a font object <clears throat> from the system fonts that the computer has. It takes a name, and that's just going to be a string. It takes the size, the actual size of the font, and you have some optional parameters here as to whether the font should be bold or italic. And you can actually set this later on. This will return a new font object that's loaded from the system fonts. It'll match the requested bold and italics flag. If a suitable system font is not found, this will fall back on loading the default Pygame font, and then it might try and, like, spruce it up with some bold um, colors around it or that sort of thing. The font name can be a comma separated list of font names to look up. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing to begin with. I'm going to say let's start with maybe Times New Roman or Arial. And whatever will come first is what we'll try to find first. And for a size, let's go with 30. And now that's created that uh, font object. Now you can see in the documentation when we have the uh, font object, it's got a few functions up here. You can render, which is what we'll be looking at, and that'll draw the text onto a new surface. It returns a surface. Size will determine the amount of space necessary. You can set underline, set bold, set italic. You can use this when you have the object itself. And you can get some more information about the font object and the text that will be written anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, here's something to note. Font objects are mainly used to render text into new surface objects. 
the render can be can at least emulate bold or italic features, but it is better to load with the font that actually has the italic or bold glyphs itself. That's uh, pretty important to note if you want your text to look as good as it can. The render function is, in this case, the most important thing that we're going to be looking at. It draws text onto a new, onto a new surface. The, fun the function sorry, will return a surface. It takes the text that we need, which is a string, whether or not we want to anti-aliasize it, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, I don't really care. Um, that's going to be a boolean value, the color that we want, and whether or not we should supply a background. Let's read through this here. This creates a new surface with a specified text rendered on it. Um, there's no way to actually draw text on an already existing surface. Instead, it returns a surface, and then you just blit that onto the surface to begin with. Blit is the function we're going to be using. Uh, you might remember me talking about that in an earlier video. The surface return will be the dimensions required to hold the text. It should be the same as those returned by the font.size. If an empty string is passed for text, blank surface will be returned that is one pixel wide and the height of the font. It'll almost kind of look like the blinking cursor that you have when you're actually, like, in the, uh, in any editor. Like, see, my, my cursor, right, the text is, is blinking there, and it'll kind of look like that. Oh, here's a note for optimization. If you know that the final destination for the text on the screen will ha always have a solid color background, they don't say the word color here, but I think they should. It might be a little bit more clarification. The text is anti-aliased, anti-aliased, whatever. You can improve importance by specifying the background color. This will cause the resulting image to maintain transparency information by color key rather than the much less efficient alpha values. So that's that's really good we can supply a background color in our case. And uh, we'll look at that. Font rendering is not thread safe. Only a single thread can render a text at a time. If you know much about threading, then maybe that could help you out. Let's keep going here. Um, we know that the text, uh, the function to render the text is, is, is render. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's create an object to keep track of our surface. That's going to be text in my case. And I'll call font.render. We need the uh, string that we're actually trying to write, and I'll just say hello world. We need to know whether or not we want to be anti aliasing <clears throat> Still don't know whether I'm saying that word correctly. And we need a color. Black. We'll just, we'll just say black. Now that that's been created, we can go ahead and draw that onto the screen. Um, I'm going to use it over in our event handling loop, because that needs to be drawing all the time anyway. I will just say window.blit text, and of course we need a position for this text on the screen. Um, I'm going to try and keep it in the center, and we can do that with window width divided by 2, so it's the center of the x coordinate. And actually, to get it to look like the text is centered, let's subtract half of the width of the text itself. Now here's an interesting thing here. Because text is a surface, we know that that has a function called get rect and that'll get the rectangular properties and the rectangle for that instance or that surface. And of course, that has properties like the x and the y, the, the width and the height, the center x, the right and the left, that sort of thing. So we can just access width and then divide that by two as well. Um, it's probably a good idea to take these variables, or at least these, these numbers and the calculations, and set them to a variable so the program doesn't have to make this calculation, do this division, every single frame, but for our purposes, this is okay for right now. Let's check out window height, because we're going to want to put this in the very center of the screen. Window height divided by 2, and uh, let's subtract a few coordinates so it's going to be a little higher up. Okay, now we should be ready to uh, run our program. If I run the code, you can check this out over here. Bam! Hello World is right over there. And it's, uh, if we move our, 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 our pixel here, it's being the text is being drawn over this sprite that we have controlled with the mouse here. We can obviously change that just by moving where and when the code is being run in our code. Regardless, that's one way that you can render text. Let's play around with some of the fonts here. Keep in mind that the first thing that you search for will be the first thing that is searched for, obviously. So if we typed in Arial, and then I had Times New Roman after it, it'll find Arial first. and then Arial will be um, what we use if it's in the system, if it's in your computer. 
All right. Um, remember, Python does have a, and, and Pygame does come with a default font, and you can access that by using none. We run this. It looks kind of like Arial from what I remember. It's kind of kind of small, a little bit like a sans font. And uh, there it is. Very, very simple. Of course, you can change the size. If we make this absolutely huge, Hello World is going to be much, much larger. Hello World! <laughs> All right. And um, remember, Pygame in the documentation did say we can optimize this. Because right now, that text is being drawn with a background of all of these alpha values, so it's trying to keep its transparency. Well, we know, at least in our program right now, there's a white background all the time. So we can supply, at least for the text, a white background. And that keeps it uh, uh, a little bit easier on the, uh, the numbers and the values to keep track of and at least draw on the screen. In this case, because the um, block is right behind it, you can see that the white background is uh, actually visible when you move around it with a block. Um, if we were to change the order of drawing these things, we could actually put the text in first and then draw the sprites. Now when we run this code, let's see what happens here. The blocks and the bricks actually um, will be drawn in front of it, so it doesn't look like there's the white background. Also, I do want to mention, um, Python was, or at least the Pygame documentation, said that you can go ahead and create fonts just by using the pygame.font.font constructor to create a new object. If you look in the documentation, uh, that takes actually a file name or a file object that you can use to just go ahead and read from a specific file name. Sometimes it's just easier to pass a string name of the actual font though and just try to have Pygame and Python find that itself like we were doing earlier with Times New Roman. That's gonna be pretty big now that it's size 90. Let's check out how this looks. Hello world! <laughs> Alright, so there you have it folks. There is a quick and easy way how to draw uh, text onto your onto your program and in your Pygame game. Remember it's created as a surface and you have to blit that yourself onto the window. But because of that, you can actually access lots of different properties like its width, like its size, and uh, that sort of thing. You can even transform it and rotate it and scale it later on. We'll actually be getting into how to do that and how to be looking at those functions in the next coming tutorials. So thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next tutorial.